Right, Giacomo, it's a, a great pleasure to have you here. Um, as you know, normally in these discussions, we want to talk about the integration uh, between startups, innovation, and corporate. And you yourself, you know, have, you have had a, uh, you know, decades of experience, really, of being on, on both sides of, uh, of the pond. So uh, very excited to see uh, in the next probably, you know, 40, 45 minutes uh, how this uh, develops. Um, maybe a couple of, uh, uh, you know, points of reference in, in history. Um, I have to say, that this is also from a personal perspective. I came here 19 years ago. It feels like it's a little bit embarrassing. It feels like yesterday, though. And after a few years at Google and working and trying to be integrated in this ecosystem, it is very different. I had the pleasure of uh, meeting uh, people like yourself. Uh, so people that at the time had been living here for probably 20 years, kind of the same, same similar situation where I'm at now. And I was blown away by the, really the two, the mix of, uh, you know, the Italian entrepreneur, but it's also the made the career in an environment where things are uh, much more fluid. But also finding, you know, this warmth that is sometimes it's hard to find locally. So uh, that was through Zviek, if you remember. Yeah. I think yeah. to me it was an eye-opening experience. That's when I started actually using the Italian community uh, with, with a much, much uh, deeper interest. So uh, I need to thank you for that because it was, I think, a period of my life where, you know, new, new avenues started and then were also when I started to manage bridge right after that. So uh, great uh, as, uh, as I, I stumble upon you, but uh, when did you come to Silicon Valley? Let's start from that, from so, kind of the middle. Yeah, so we, so uh, I came in 1982, uh, 1982, 83, I was going back and forth between Italy and, and here. Um, so we, we started Logitech uh, across the Alps. We were two Italians and a Swiss, okay? And uh, so the, so I was in Ivrea, and then the other Italian and the Swiss were, were in, uh, near Lausanne, in a small place called Apple. Apple, like Apple. <laughs> okay. yes. And um, so we started there, and, that, and we started as a consulting company. And um, one of the very first things that we did is that we basically invested all the money that we had to go to Japan to pursue a, a contract with the Japanese company. So again, so, so we're talking 1980... 81. 81, right. 81. So, so Logitech years. started in 1981. Um, so that, it's a different world, okay? It was a different world. Yes. <laughs> the, 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 it was a different world. So you would go to Japan, nobody would speak English. Nobody, okay? Uh, everything was through translator, okay? So it, it was completely... So then... Um, uh, but so we started in, um, and there are, if you want, two versions of the situation. One is that Pierluigi really wanted to come back uh, to the Zabacosta, US, Pierluigi Zabacosta, and, uh, and uh, because he really hated Switzerland. And because um, Pierluigi, meantime, we went to Stanford, right? Uh, he, had, he had gone to Stanford because his wife, wife his there. wife was here, and uh, he had. Uh, uh, he had gone to Stanford, and then he had he had developed a project together with Daniel Boerli, the, the Swiss gentleman that they, they had sold to a to a Swiss company, and so they went they moved to Switzerland to sort of follow up that project. But then we said we'll we'll uh, then we 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 did some work for this uh, Swiss company that had bought uh, the, the the project anyway. Uh, so, so one of the reasons is that Pierluigi really wanted to come back here, but also we said we were saying at the time uh, we really need to go to Silicon Valley or to Japan. I mean, this is early '80s, so the world Japan was the place where things were happening. Okay, and uh, it was a completely different, <coughs> different thing that it is today. <coughs> and uh, thanks God we didn't go to Japan. That's I would say. So we. We came here, Pierluigi came first, then I came second, and then, and then Daniel Boyer came third. So within two years, basically, we had moved, oh, we had moved to, uh, to Silicon Valley, in famous place in, uh, in uh, I've told many times, in University. University Avenue, 165 University Avenue, that we were the first technology company in that, in that little place, and then 
after that <clears throat> there were quite quite a few interesting companies uh, PayPal, Google, Google was there Pay yeah. PayPal and uh, and uh, and that and that thing was owned by actually it changed it changed ownership uh, Im immediately after we 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 rented the place there it was <coughs> was owned by Saida Amidi who is the founder of plug and play that had a store of a bag of, uh, of, uh, <laughs> of rugs of, uh, of rugs on, uh, right, on your right, right, right. yeah. okay. that's no, a different no, story yeah, yeah, that's that's interesting different. because it's very different real so, so we moved at the time so and, that's I'm sorry, 1982. 1982. I moved in 1982. Yeah. 82. 82. The beginning of 82. Yeah. Uh, the spring of 82. And of course. But to me, it's the year that Italy won the World Cup. Where <laughs> I was That's my, my memory takes me. Yes. Sir. And and so and and it was an experience. I can tell you, uh, especially at the time, because clearly, the communication was was and and we were doing many different things at the time. I mean, one of the very first things that we that we learned was well in america you need to focus okay uh, because we we were talking to potential investors we couldn't raise any money at the beginning because we were doing some software products <coughs> we were doing some um consulting. some hardware uh, we were doing some consulting and when we started talking about that, okay, people say, well, when you decide what you want to do. Yeah. Come on. Uh, it was just the three of you, right? Yeah, well, it was, it, well, it was the three of us, and, and we actually then, then we, we brought a few people uh, in, some from Italy, from Italy we brought my Richard Gianola, that some of you might have, <coughs> might have used to work for me at Olivetti, and then, and then, and then we brought a couple of people <coughs> from Switzerland, uh, one, one person from from uh, uh, Canada, so it was. But did you still maintain the office in uh, in Switzerland at the time? Yeah, yeah, we still, we had an office in Switzerland. We also had a small office in uh, in uh, in Italy as well. We were doing some hardware product at the time. We did all kinds of. So we're still looking for a product market fit. What what today people talk about product market fit? Let's test in the world. Yeah. Well, we were we were again we we were coming from Europe where the the concept is that you 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 do things because and and the more you do the better the better it is okay because at the end if one thing doesn't work you survive with the other thing and then you learn that the issue is not about survival the issue is about succeeding okay fast. or failing Okay, and it doesn't matter. You, if you fail, then you start offering to, su to succeed. So the focus and the, and the focus on success rather than survival uh, was one of the first lessons that we that we learned. It took a while to learn, uh, but uh, but then at some point we started focusing on the mouse, and uh, and uh, and the mouse the mouse carried us carried carried us. <coughs> Uh, for, forward, okay, but it took a few years. So we say that in 1984, we used to say 1984, so three years after we were founded, we married the mom. We decided that we were going to marry the mom. We were going to make a, a long term commitment to the mouse and not three just years a, after yeah, three that. years after. Let's talk yeah. one second there, just yeah. getting a sense what was Silicon Valley like in nineteen eighty four. So let's talk about Xerox, let's talk about Olivetti, the research centers yeah. that were out there. Let's talk yeah. about Macintosh I mean Apple, sorry, yeah. That, uh, yeah. that was about to launch the Macintosh. So yeah. what was the world like when you came here? Well, the world was, I mean, it was the beginning of the PC, uh, right? Uh, the PC, I mean, uh, the PC is 1982. Uh, okay, and and there was the Lisa. And the Lisa came out. I mean, some of you may remember the Lisa. Uh, we bought the Lisa actually right away uh, when it came out because we were again looking at the mouse, at the user interface. We started believing that the mouse would be important going forward, uh, uh, but it took it took several years. So uh, and and there was venture capital. So the, the, the thing that you start seeing, started seeing is that the ecosystem, okay? The ecosystem is 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 there. You could talk to people, you could go and, and visit people. I mean, we had Osborne came, came to to see our office. I mean, you, know, you don't know who is Osborne, but he made one of the first 
PCs. Okay, we were at the launch of the PS2 a uh, couple of years later. Uh, I mean, it's a much more open society, right? I mean, you just go and you want to talk to somebody, you pick up the phone and call the person, and the person picks up the phone. Okay. What was the role of uh, universities there? Stanford, you know, if you remember, I mean, some of you must have seen the, the uh, movie of Steve Jobs, right? And he yeah. goes to Stanford, does a presentation, goes awfully uh, badly. Yeah. Um, what was the world of research, Xerox, research centers in general, where some of the, you know, some of these uh, peripherals and uh, hardware and software were initially tested versus then the world no, of the No, no, we didn't. We, we we used, we, we had some connection at Stanford. The major connection at Stanford was actually uh, Dennis Allison, who was a professor at Stanford, who uh, introduced us uh, some people. <laughs> okay, so that was the net, again, it was the network effect. Okay, so the, so that was it. And then we, we actually had the subscription at the time, this was before the internet, okay. The, uh, we had a subscription to a uh, broadcast the Stanford had the broadcast of some courses, so we had to put a special antenna on the top of the building <laughs> to get that uh, to get that stuff from, from Stanford. Uh, we didn't use we used later Stanford um, for some when we were getting into uh, sound devices, and we used because the music department at Stanford was also pretty pretty good and all that other stuff. So uh, the, uh, not not an extremely tight situation, but it was there. And I mean, you just go and use the resources, but we didn't uh, get too many services for step, from Stanford at the beginning. It was a few years later. Um, in uh, around 88, 89, we did one thing also on, on, uh, on um, ergonomics of uh, user <coughs> interfaces, I mean, and the mouse and so But at that point, to a certain extent, I mean, we already knew more than, than people there. How was the Olivetti, Olivetti Research Center? Well, the Olivetti Research Center, so the Olivetti was sort of starting starting then. Uh, so Enzo Torresi was the head of Olivetti. The, the, the Olivetti Center had started as a testing facility for semiconductors, okay? Because they discovered that it would be better, at the time you you would buy a batch of semiconductor or microprocessor, let's say, okay? And 7% of them were not good, okay? That type of stuff, I mean, that, so those were the numbers, so it's not like the situation now. So, so Olivetti said, okay, so we'll buy the, the components that were all made in the US at the time, okay? We'll test them in the US before we ship them over so that we eliminate the ones that we have to eliminate. That was, it feels like a million years ago when it was actually manufacturing happening here, the silicon, when it started being yeah, I mean, clearly, 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 the, valley, clearly the, 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 the semiconductor companies were all here. I mean, uh, Intel, AMD, National, all, 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 uh, all uh, uh, these companies were here. So, uh, so that that was so that's how and, so Olivetti, and then Olivetti and then and then um, actually in 1982 at the beginning of 1982 there is there is a story that not many people know uh, because then success as many fathers or mothers uh, clearly but the, the the real origin so so at Olivetti they were trying to debate what to do about this, uh, this, this IBM PC, okay? The IBM PC, had, and they, they had a different architecture, it was the M20 architecture, it was a model, was a Zilog um, uh, uh, G8000 based, uh, G8, based uh, uh, <coughs> machine. So, so Luigi Mercurio, who was a very visionary uh, manager at, at Olivetti, at the begin, after the announcement of the IBM PC, he basically <clears throat> um, took one guy called uh, Sandro Gerciotti, who was probably one of the best hardware <clears throat> designers that I've known in my life. Uh, he sent him over to Cupertino and he said, you go there, you develop an IBM PC compatible machine, and we are not going to tell anybody until it's ready. 
That's the M24. That's the, that's the M24. So not the and not the the so so Sandro Gajorte came in three months. He put together the stuff. Then he actually he called me and said, "Well, okay, I I I worked with Sandro before." <laughs> so the he called me and he said, "The I need some help with the bios here. Can you help me?" And we had done some projects together before, so we know we know each other. So I did a few months of consulting. I did the first the very first. Uh, uh, BIOS for the M24, and on the 25th of July of 1992, the, uh, <coughs> the, M20, the, the very first prototype was demonstrated to, um, to Carlo De Benedetti uh, for the machine, and the, the thing that Sandro Gacciotti did, which, which was a revolution at the time, he, he was able to do a fully compatible machine using an 8080 six instead of an 8088 and everybody mm -hmm. was saying that's impossible to do a compatible machine with the 8086 and so it was twice as fast and, and so M24 was a great success and went on, lasted for quite yeah, some that's, time. That's where I started yeah. calling the M24. Yeah. yeah. And so the other, the Logitech really had the mouse already there. Yeah, and we had, we had the mouse with all the mouse to Bolivetti as well but, uh, the, the, and, uh, and you also understand why. Uh, the, I mean, I, I think that there was uh, there a little bit the um, why why Olivetti was not uh, more successful or successful. Well, I, I think in part because Olivetti did not understand that the world of electronics was moving to Asia very rapidly, and so. Um, continue to build um, computers in Scarmagno, it became quite quickly not competitive. And also there was a little bit of going back and forth between <coughs> Cupertino and Ibrea. Uh, I, I think they should have moved most of the development to, yeah. to Cupertino. Yeah. Uh, they, they didn't do it all the way, okay, they did it um, halfway. But the Olivetti story, I, I have my opinions, I know I know quite a few people. The, uh, diff different the chapter, Let, let's talk about Apple though, that yeah. probably also was growing at the same time. Yeah. As you guys, you or Pierluigi met uh, Steve Jobs anytime? We, we met Steve Jobs at some point, uh, uh, but maybe a few years later, uh, not at the very, very beginning. We had an interaction with, I mean, an indirect interaction with with Apple at the beginning because the the SRI SRI, formerly Stanford Research yeah. Institute, yeah. was the place where the mouse was invented, yeah. and they held the 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 old patent to the mouse. Okay, and one day was probably was at the end of 82, the end of 83, I don't know, somebody showed up and um, from SRI and said, oh, okay, well, we have this patent, you know, and the stuff you are selling the mouse, the stuff you should pay us some royalties. And we said, well, show us that Apple is paying royalties and we will be glad to pay. Okay. Of course, Apple, Apple never, yeah, all, yeah, yeah, of course, Apple. Apple, I mean, I've never paid royalties for anybody. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, uh, and so the story ended uh, sort of, uh, sort of, uh, but we, we were following uh, Apple quite, quite closely because of the user interface. Yes. Yeah. What, what do you think in those years that you, you guys had a feeling, okay, we made it as Logitech? And so we crossed the hump. I mean, we are we are front and center. Well, I think I think eighty seven. I would say eighty seven was because you went uh, public first in Switzerland. In Switzerland, nineteen eighty eight. Yeah, we went public in Switzerland, nineteen eighty eight, because nobody would take us public in the US. Nobody would give us money. What was uh, the uh, what was the revenue? If you uh, remember, 40, 40 million dollars. Forty million when you went public in yeah in when we went public in in and we were growing at one hundred percent per year. Okay, so at the time, so the year, uh, <coughs> the year before, we had, we were at twenty million, and then we, <coughs> we, we were public forty million dollars in revenues, 
And you could go public with a hardware company at the time at $40 million. Yeah. Right? So but did you have money from investors at the time when you went public? To Say it again? Did you, did you raise money with local investors? Yeah. Or that we, we, did, we did the mezzanine round um, nine months before we went public with a strange entity with, that was a, that was PTV, Pacific Technology Ventures, which was which was the first um, Japan venture capital fund, which had been started by another very visionary <coughs> person who was the, the founder of IDG, uh, Pat McGovern. Pat McGovern had started in the 80s a fund to invest in Japan. Pat McGovern also started in the 90s the first venture fund that invested in China. So he was. And he was a guy that was publishing InfoWorld and uh, mm -hmm. IDG. Yeah. Uh, that was visionary ahead of that. Very, 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 very. very. IDG had also IDG yeah. Venture. Yeah. Great. So that so yeah. that's a time where you know you become a public <laughs> company. So clearly you are under a totally different set of uh, rules and governance. Yeah. Uh, but you never moved back to to Switzerland or to Europe at the time. No, no. Of we a, of a we transaction. we okay. So we had. At the time, no, we never, we never, but we kept, we kept a small group in, uh, in, um, in, uh, in Switzerland. We had also a small group in Italy that, for a while, actually merged with, with another company called Algol, uh, okay. and then we separated again. Um, some of you may know. I was Jolie who, who uh, was a guy that uh, that was doing a, an interesting job at the time, which was, he was coming here in the U.S., I mean, he actually had, had been here, he had, he had a startup, then he went back to Europe, and he, he was scouting for innovative products uh, to distribute in Italy. Basically. How do you know? I know, I know Maurizio personally. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I didn't know that's what he So, so his first startup was actually hosted within the large tech offices in uh, Edward City. That's funny. Okay. But again, so, so I think, I mean, these are, these are, the examples of the the power of the networking. You are, you talk, you 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 see, and you look around for help, and you you find it in a way or not. So do you have any regrets from uh, the way the things um, evolved or, uh, at Logitech? Something that you think you, no, you just I, could have I, done differently? I, I think there is. I think the. I mean, we. Um, there is one thing that probably uh, that probably uh, could have made even a bigger difference. So in 1991, we launched what was, for all practical purposes, the first digital camera in the world, Photoman, okay, so $990, okay, black and white. <coughs> And and we stayed on it for a few years. Uh, then I mean, in '92, then I had left, and, and I I was a big, if you want, uh, fan of that product. And uh, and then um, and then Daniel Boyle was the CEO. Then a few years later, and he at some point he got tired, and he said, "This is never going to work," and he killed it. Okay around 1995, okay? I think that that was a mistake. If we had stuck with it for another three, four, five years, uh, I mean, Logitech could have been potentially a much bigger That I mean, clearly could have, could have driven a much bigger growth during a period of time. It, it doesn't mean that it would have not died, like it, had, it does die, who buys cameras anymore, right? It's a small, it's a shrinking market, but but that part we um, we had learned those lessons. The, the lesson that um, some products at some point die. Okay, we we had one very uh, interesting product that, for example, <coughs> uh, there was the Henel scanner. So a little scanner that. This bit that you just pass on the piece of paper rather than putting the paper inside the scanner or on top of the scanner, right? Okay, you had the, the scanner scanner. And 
for a few years, I mean, it sold like crazy. Okay, it sold well, people would buy it, and then at some point it died completely. Okay, it just died, it just disappeared. People stopped buying it, it was not. It's just a life cycle of product. It's a, it's a life cycle of product, but, but in the product category, disappeared completely. Yeah. Okay, disappeared completely. And, and the stuff. So, so on that, we did not have that problem. We had learned that some product work, some product don't work. Uh, we, uh, but you need to continue to innovate. And again, that's, that's where you go into the innovation part. The important thing is that you need to continue to innovate. You need to continue to uh, develop new product, new concepts, new, try new things and all that type of stuff. Some of them will not work and you just need to kill them. Sometimes you may kill them a little too early, like it happens in the, in the, for the digital camera. So I, I would say that's probably the biggest regret because that could have been big. But I guess also those were the years where typically, you know, everything was invented internally, right? So it was more of a the syndrome of not invented here. There wasn't a lot of m and So today the whole world is talking about open innovation in general, how to accelerate yeah. uh, these waves of innovation. And whether you build it internally or from outside doesn't really matter as long as you drive that. Yeah, revolution. Uh, did, did you guys were leaving some well, of that at the time? We, we, some okay, so, so what we did, okay, so, <clears throat> so the way we did it, uh, we didn't do, do it through m a until where, you know, the Luca actually uh, joined the company. Well, actually, we acquired the company before then, but, but, uh, um, but at the beginning, we were acquiring products, not the, the digital camera, actually, the original design was not an internally developed design. We went out, we had a group of people that had developed something, they really didn't know how to make a really solid finished product. We said, we'll do it, we'll do it with you, the stuff, so we license the product, and, uh, and, then, and then you develop internally the next generation. Same thing for the, for the NL scanner. We went to Japan, we got Omron, uh, and the product like that, we took that product and we said, okay, we need, and that's the same thing we had done with the mouse. Okay, the mouse that, the first mouse that we sold was a mouse made by a small Swiss company called Depra. Okay, the guys did not have any clue what to do with it, so we <coughs> took the mouse, we started selling it, and then, and then, uh, six months into selling the product, we went to these guys and said, we need to develop the next generation mouse because this one is too expensive, the resolution is not right, and so on and so forth. The guy said, you guys are nuts, okay? This is only six months, okay? I'm still not making money and you want to do a new product. Yes, yes, indeed, we want to do a new product. That was the right approach. If we, did we really know or not? I don't know, but we did, okay? And, and that was the, and that was, and, and people who did not develop, they, they were left behind. So that, that's the, the, the lesson. Uh, let, let's fast forward a little bit. So that started your new career on the other side of the table as an investor. Yeah. Uh, maybe a couple of words about um, your fund and how that uh, developed over time. Why did you focus on, on uh, those verticals uh, when, when you were deciding, okay, what, what do we do next? Okay, so the, so the, um, so, after I left Logitech, I, I did some angel investing for a few years. Then, the, the, then in 1999, I reconnected with the Benedetti uh, group in Italy because they were launching the, uh, an incubator. Uh, they, they were launching two things at the same time, a, a, a fund of venture funds called uh, CDB Web Tech, and some of you may know, and then an incubator called um, Cheerlab. Uh, and so they asked me to help them with that. Um, the incubator, uh, then the year 2000 happened, and so they decided to pull back a little bit. <coughs> and so I helped them restructure, and then I said, well, okay, let's go forward and, uh, and do it the way it should be done, which is with a fund structure. And I, I've never been particularly, particularly, um, uh, fond of incubators for reasons that I can explain, okay? Uh, but 
in Europe there was this fantasy that there were lots of incubators in the US, which was not the case at that time. I mean, there are more, many more now, okay, and not, and not to, at the time, I mean, <coughs> I didn't know. Okay. So, uh, so, so we start a small fund, we did early stage investment, the first fund. Um, the focus, the geographical focus was here? Or uh, it was here, 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 we had, we had two investments. Yeah, we had two investments in Italy that we carried over from, and uh, one of them was Easy Market, a company was doing uh, that. That again, <coughs> it, and that's where another one of the of the of the. So Easy Market had the fundamental idea of what then became Expedia or, or things like those. But again, you do it in Rimini, okay? And you you think that if you conquer Italy, okay, that's a big success, right? Okay, instead of thinking of conquering the world, okay? So the, so the guy, I mean, the guy was actually very good and he was, he was uh, just uh, he starting to do things and then Google has done later and everybody has done later, which is, he was going around and sucking all the information from the from the internet and building up a a Expedia like uh, travel a travel portal that allows you to pick up your travel 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 thing, um, and so that's that that was. But but again, sometimes you don't think big enough. That's the other thing that you. Uh, learn in the US is that you need to think big, but really big, insanely big. I mean, and, uh, and, and fast. And fast, yeah. And, uh, and this stuff. But there are very good ideas in other places, uh, but, but again, there is the, the air that you breathe here, I mean, gives you a different way of thinking. That, that's part of the, and, and that, that's true also today, even though the, uh, now what I consider, I mean, if you want the second generation of uh, <clears throat> uh, venture investors in, in Europe or in Italy in particular, in, in India I would say there, is a, there are some pretty serious players and that, uh, with, with some meaningful amount of money, but but I think the thinking is still a little bit too small, okay? And uh, and and the again the 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 attitude of surviving rather than succeeding is still probably it's, it's still the main one. Yes. Also, I mean, there are some technicalities there we can cover real quick. Yeah. But I think the major issue is liquidity, right? So here we'll yeah. live through liquidity, through yeah. acquisition. Companies like Google last year yeah. was a Google. Every week there yeah. was an acquisition. It was that, oh, eight years ago. <coughs> the companies here on the second floor by the company on the first floor, and those are companies with 10 people. Yeah. So there is a liquidity uh, that goes through m and and sometimes through big liquidity events as IPO. Yeah. In Europe, that doesn't happen yet. And so the, the logic of venture capital is somewhat Absolutely. You know, constrained by the fact that uh, I cannot stay 15 years, 20 years with <laughs> the same investment. Because exactly. That's not Audi, 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 uh, exactly. And, and I think that that's what what keeps the the, the European companies uh, somewhat behind, uh, which is this reluctance to acquire, uh, which also uh, again, as you said, I mean, Google may acquire a company a week. Uh, Oracle is the same, Microsoft is the same, is and they, are, they, they suffer. Many of them you don't even hear about them. Okay, they Most happen, but they happen. They happen all the time because people realize that either you <coughs> can capture that innovation that that is happening out there, and you cannot do it in, inside, and and you have to be and you have to learn also how to do it because not many of them will work. But certainly, the first thing that you that you uh, also need to understand is that well, okay, now we are going to get these guys under control. Okay, that's a little bit the attitude, and that's the, the that's the a sure way to kill whatever innovation is there. So, well, uh, fast forward again, next phase. Yeah. What do you think are the opportunities today, both for entrepreneurs yeah. and also for <laughs> you know investors in general? 
Well, okay. So the okay. So the so the 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 good things now or the great thing, but also the um, is the fact that you you can start and do things with much less effort than it took. Well, I mean, if you wanted to do a, a SaaS software a while ago, okay, <coughs> I mean, you had to build a server farm, you had to bring the things in, it would take years and years. I mean, even the development tools, okay, that were evolving quite, quite well. I made a couple of investments in development tools, which I learned some lessons there, but the, the, the but right now, I mean, you can build a service, I mean, overnight, okay? You can build it very quickly. You don't have any any um, infrastructure to take care of. I mean, you just need to be smart and fast and uh, and you can do it, which, again, I think can, can offer um, some very interesting opportunities also in Italy, I mean, where there is talent that, that knows how to do this stuff, okay? At Nito Robotics, which is a company that we, all our uh, apps and, uh, and the cloud infrastructure for Nito Robotics was done in a small group in Milan, okay? So I had the guy. So it was one of was your portfolio companies that were eventually you became yes. also the CEO. The CEO. Yeah, yes, that was one of our portfolio companies, uh, Home Robotics, okay? A, a competitor to Roomba, to iRobot. And uh, and the stuff. So the I mean all our, our, our cloud and apps is made was made by a small group in Milano, five people. I mean with the guy that uh, that, that that we hired, and then he hired very good people. I mean he hired exceptional. I mean these people, the, the people in the team in Milano could compete with anybody. anybody. Yeah, uh, that's yeah. always the last question. In the interest of time, if you yeah. were to start again, I mean you went to uh, you studied computer science in Pisa in the. Yeah, in 70s, 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 I was thinking in the 70s, no, 70s, so yeah. definitely ahead of time. Also, yeah. the fact that it was computer science department yeah. in school just at the time, I think is ahead of time. What, if you were today about to graduate and think of a career as an entrepreneur, tell me one area where you would uh, put your bets. Well, it's hard, it's hard because, again, I'm not, I'm not, um, again, I, I'm who I am right now, okay, but, but clearly, <laughs> Um, I mean, artificial intelligence, so the, the, the power that is going into the process of generation after generation is mind-boggling, okay? Um, it's mind-boggling because the, I mean, very inexpensive processes in a while will have facial recognition, will have, uh, will have AI processing capability, will have self-learning capabilities, I mean, of, uh, in, in, in ways that are extraordinary. So, so now, I, I think I would look at that and say, what can you do with all that. There, there, there are lots of people, of course, I mean, the, the, the world is crowded of people that are, that are thinking, that are thinking about this. The, the other thing I would probably do is to, so, so I would look at opportunities in the next generation computing power, where it is leading, okay, and what are the, the, the issues, I mean, keep in mind, so one of the, the, the um, uh, well, I don't know, but it, 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 there was there was a language uh, there was the artificial uh, intelligent language called Lisp long yes. time ago. Yes. Yes. Dissertation okay. on it. Yes. Yeah. And uh, and uh, so so we when we came here, okay, I mean I don't know. I mean we went we we knew John McCarthy, who was the inventor of Lisp. It was okay. my my uh, professor in the dissertation of, uh, of my thesis. Oh, okay, so, okay. okay. Okay, so they, they, they stuff. So, so again, it, it, it becomes, but, but now artificial intelligence is real, okay? And it's real and it's, uh, it's mind boggling and it's actually pretty scary to a That's one area. Another area where I would look at is to, I 
So if you look at what is happening in China right now, so innovations in business <coughs> models and the use of computers and use of mobile, I think China is getting ahead of everybody else pretty fast and very fast. And they are, so I think that there is the opportunity also to look at some of the stuff that they are doing and maybe do something that is a little bit more, I would say, going to China and copy some, some, some exactly. of this stuff. Reverse some of this stuff. Uh, absolutely. Yes. The, the reverse. I think it's time. The time has come where, where China is leading and people are not realizing it. And China is going to behave for a while the same way the US behaved which is the local market is so big that we don't need to go out too much, okay? I mean, Alibaba is now starting to go into Europe and all that type of stuff, but really, okay, the market, the internal market is so big. And this is very typical of what was happening in the US 30 years ago, okay? People would just look at the US, what do I need to talk about? And, and this was one of the things that distinguished uh, Logitech, we, we, we sort of started global uh, relatively early, and we, we and at NITO, even at, we were pretty small, okay, we were pretty global very quickly. And I had a, a long discussion with one of the, no, not very long discussion, because we didn't go anywhere with the discussion. The guy said, well, okay, you are so small, how come you are in 30 countries, okay? If I can do it with 10 people, why, what's the problem? Okay. What's the cost? What's the problem? Yeah. Okay, so that. Right, so next trip instead of uh, Vegas is probably China. So, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go to the, to the show. So, there is a show in China in October. There is a pretty large show. Uh -huh. go, go to the. Next October. October, November, the, the international. Uh, the October. In Shanghai. Okay. Put it in time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.